This evening, it's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Tim Lee, who will present on CBD oil, research risks and benefits. Dr. Lee received his bachelor degree from the University of California at Berkeley, his PhD from the University of Chicago, and did his postdoctoral fellowship at Purdue University. He was recruited to the Nevada Cancer Institute in 2010 and joined Roseman in 2014, following the merger of the Nevada Cancer Institute with Roseman University. His research has been funded by the National Institutes of Health, the Department of Defense, and the American Cancer Society. He was also named Southern Nevada's 2015 Innovator Healthcare Hero. We are proud that he is a faculty member in the Roseman College of Pharmacy. Following Dr. Lee's 45 minute presentation, he will take questions. And now, take it away, Dr. Lee. Good evening, everyone. And thank you, Brenda, for our kind introductions and a wonderful opportunity to share our research with Roseman alumni. It is November 11. So first I would like to acknowledge and thank our veterans for their service and sacrifice. Now CBD is just a fascinating chemical compound and an interesting topic for discussion. So let us begin. In this presentation, I will share the research in my lab at Roseman. I will discuss the law and regulations, the basics, risks, and benefits of CBD oil. I will share a novel method for potency assessment of CBD oil, which was developed in my lab. And finally, I will share some tips on how to choose the right CBD oil. So at Roseman, I uh, run the molecular imaging and proteomic lab at the Summerlin campus in Nevada. The core of my research team includes myself and a very talented postdoctoral fellow, Dr. Yasuyo Urazaki. My lab specializes in the uh, development and application of stimulated Raman scattering microscopy which is a very advanced optical imaging technology. This imaging technology is extremely sensitive to the visualizations of lipids and lipid-rich structures, such as foam cell, fat cells, liver cells, and cancer cells. The visualization of these cells are very critical to the study of disease processes, such as atherosclerosis, obesity, fatty liver, and cancer metastasis. The photo that you see here are those of the custom view microscope that I constructed at the Summerlin campus. My lab is also specialized in nanofluidic proteomics, which is essentially lab on a chip technology for proteomic applications. These technology use nanocapillary and nanofluidic chips to separate and detect proteins. They are extremely sensitive and use very small quantity of protein. Nanofluidic proteomics is highly suitable for the uh, clinical diagnostics using tissue and liquid biopsies. Using molecular imaging and nanofluidic proteomics, my lab study the pathology, diagnostics, and therapeutics of metabolic disorder. In addition, we study the bioactivity of phytonutrients or plant-based nutrients and their uses for the prevention of metabolic disorder. Since uh, 2018, our research has been funded by doTERRA to study essential oils. doTERRA is a Utah-based company that produces and sells essential oils. In collaboration with doTERRA, we develop methods to authenticate essential oils and characterize their bioactivities. We presented our research at the doTERRA Global Convention in Salt Lake City in 2018 and again in 2019. These photos are from our presentation at the doTERRA conventions. In addition, we published four research papers in peer-reviewed scientific journal within the last year on uh, essential oil and CBD oil. But you see, we would not be able to study CBD oils without the passage of the 2018 Farm Bill. 
So this farm bill essentially remove hemp revised CBD from the Controlled Substances Act. So now the commercial cultivation of hemp and the domestic production of hemp products are legal in the United States. The farm bill has tremendous impact on the CBD industry. For example, CBD commerce has increased exponentially since 2018 and is projected to reach $25 billion by 2023. The consumer interest in CBD product has also increased exponentially since 2018. And the interest in the CBD products are driven mainly by the many positive health benefits of CBD oils. However, the uh, regulations on CBD products remain very, very confusing. The FDA has released statement indicating that it will enforce the same laws on hand products at its doors for other FDA regulated products. That foods, beverages, and dietary supplements containing hand derived CBD are still subject to the food, drugs, and cosmetic acts review. Now that is fine because um, FDA regulations generally protect the consumer, but here is a twist. In June of 2018, the FDA approved EPDO lights, which is a CBD prescription drug to treat rare and severe form of epilepsy. The FDA then argues that since CBD is a drug, it is illegal to market CBD by adding it to a food or labeling CBD as a dietary supplement. And that is very confusing, right? Uh, because what's the point of legalizing CBD products if their production and consumption are illegal by FDA regulation? And the confusion on the legality of CBD products continue with the definition of uh, hemp versus marijuana. Hemp is legal, but marijuana is not. However, there is no taxonomic distinction between ham and marijuana. Both ham and marijuana refer to the plants of the species cannabis. There is only a legal distinction between ham and marijuana based on the TSC content. So the cannabis plant that contain less than 0.3% TSC are classified as ham, and the cannabis plant that contain more than 0.3% TSC are classified as marijuana. So recently, you probably heard on the news about the owners of legal CBD dispensary were arrested by DEA agents. Well, the DEA agent could not distinguish ham from marijuana based on the physical appearances. And the drug tests detect for the presence of TSC and not its percentage. In fact, many drug tests including those required for employment in the state of Nevada, detect the presence of TSC and not its percentage. So the consumer and provider of CBD products are still facing tremendous legal hurdles. And it's uh, noteworthy to point out that there are many industrial uses for ham. In fact, up to 50,000 uses of ham have been described. For example, in Japan, ham is cultivated to make traditional rope. And in the US, ham is cultivated to make rope. So the Farm Bill brought back a burgeoning industry that uh, extend beyond just dope. So what are ham oil versus CBD oils and how are the oil extracted? Ham oil is referred to the oil extracted from ham seeds using co-pressing method. Ham oil has very low cannabinoid content. On the other hand, CBD oils refer to the oil extracted from the leaves, flower, and stalks of the cannabis plants. CBD oils is rich in cannabinoids. So the two most common methods for CBD oil extractions are solvent extraction using the ethanol and CO2 extraction using supercritical a CO2 liquid. The final step of both extraction method use a rotary evaporator to remove the solvent. And the recover extracts are highly viscous. The producer would then dilute these extracts in carrier oil 
and spike the extract with CBD isolate or flavoring additive. And the processes of dilution and additions really bother me greatly because I associate them with adulteration of CBD oil. And I uh, will discuss adulteration later in the presentation. So what are in the extracts? Uh, first, there are cannabinoids, which are the chemical compounds unique to the cannabis plants. There are over 144 cannabinoids isolated from the cannabis plants. TSC and CBD uh, example of cannabinoids. And TSC is a psychoactive cannabinoids or the uh, chemical compound that gets you high. Uh, CBD does not have the same psychoactivity as TSC and uh, CBD doesn't get you high. Then there's uh, terpenes in the extracts. Terpenes are the volatile compounds produced by plants that have pleasant aroma and many purported health benefits. Terpenes of the cannabis plants include myrcene, limonene, beta caryophyllene lanoline, lanolu, and uh, alpha-pinene. So in the marketplace, you will see offerings for full spectrum and broad spectrum CBD oils and CBD isolate. Uh, so what are they? Full spectrum CBD oils has terpenes and cannabinoids with TSC being less than 0.3%. Uh, broad spectrum CBD oils have terpenes, cannabinoids with no TSC and CBD isolate referred to purify CBD with greater than 99% uh, purity. Now, the uh, biological activities of CBD are thought to be exerted through the endocannabinoid system. And the endocannabinoid system uh, essentially signaling pathway comprising of cannabinoid receptors, endocannabinoids, signaling proteins, and enzymes. There are two cannabinoid receptors, CB1 and CB2. CB1 is most abundant in the nervous system and CB2 is found predominantly in the immune system. So TST interact directly with CB1 receptor and CBN or cannabinol, another cannabinoid, interact directly with CB2 receptor. beta caryophyllene which is a uh, cannabis terpene interact directly with CB2 receptor. However, CBD does not interact with either CB1 or CB2 receptor. So in order for CBD to exert its biological effects on the endocannabinoid system, it needs to act in conjunctions with the cannabinoids or terpenes that interact directly with CB1 or CB2 receptor. So the synergy between uh, CBD and other cannabinoids or terpenes are commonly known as the entourage effects of CBD oil. And multiple publications have confirmed the entourage effects of CBD oils, where cannabis extracts were found to have stronger biological activity than CBD isolate. And the entourage effects uh, generally provide synergistic multi-targeted effects, improve pharmacokinetics, overcome resistant mechanism of pathogenic microorganisms and neutralize the adverse e side effect of individual compounds. So what are the health risks of CBD oil? The FDA have identified several si known side effects, including alertness, GI distress, and mood. Then there's uh, many concerns on liver injury, drug interactions, male reproductive toxicity, cumulative exposure, and special populations such as pregnant women and children, and also CBD consumption in uh, animals that are part of the human food chain. Then there are the risk of conversion of cannabinoid into TSC during the uh, food preparation process. For example, uh, heating at 110 centigrade for 30 minutes can lead to the decarboxylation of TSCA and the formation of TSC, or the decarboxylation of CBDA and the formation of CBD. In addition, treatment of CBD with alcohol, acid, and heat 
can lead to the cyclizations of CBD and the formation of uh, TSC. So pot brownies are addictive because the preparation process might increase the TSC content. Then of course, we have all heard about the e-secret or vaping product use associated lung injury or e-valley. So as of February of this year, 2,807 hospitalized cases and 68 deaths due to e-valley have been reported in the US. The vaping liquid generally contain nicotine, TSC, CBD oils, flavorings, and additives such as vitamin E acetate. Vitamin E acetate was identified in the lung fluid sample from e-valley patients. So the CDC concluded that uh, vitamin E acetate is strongly linked to the e-valley outbreak. However, the evidence is not sufficient to root out the contribution of other chemicals, such so as TSC and CBD. Then there are the risks of adulteration and contamination of CBD oils. As uh, mentioned previously, the practices of dilution and addition during the production of CBD oils encourage economically motivated adulteration. So to lower the production costs, producers have been adding synthetic CBD to CBD oils, as well as diluting the extracts in carrier oils of questionable origins and qualities. As you can see, many consumers of CBD products have been harmed due to the synthetic CBD and numerous harmful contaminants have been detected in CBD products. For example, in 2017, five patients in Utah experienced seizure, confusion, unconsciousness, and hallucination due to a synthetic CBD. And as of May of 2018, 52 people was harmed in the US due to a synthetic CBD. And contaminants such as polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, which are carcinogens, pesticide and heavy metal have been detected in CBD products. Then there are the risks of not getting what you pay for due to mislabeling of CBD oil. A study in 2017 found that the CBD content was mislabeled in 69% of 84 sample tested, and the TSC content was uh, greater than the legal limit in 21% of 84 sample tested. Now, for all those risks, what are the benefits of CBD? And as previously uh, mentioned, the FDA has approved APDOLX for the treatment of seizure, and APDOLX is a uh, CBD isolate. And the clinical data on the benefit of CBD isolate in reducing seizure are clear. For example, treatment of uh, epidiolex would lead to a 42% uh, reduction in the frequency of seizure as compared to a 17% reductions in the frequency of seizure in, for the patient in the placebo group. Then there's a many unproven benefit of CBD. I found many clinical studies using CBD isolate to prevent public speaking anxiety, uh, pain and spasticity, schizophrenia and psychosis, and also Parkinson's disease. However, the data have been very preliminary or supporting data are very weak. And the benefit of CBD isolate are either unclear or there was no observable benefit. Surprisingly, I have not found any significant clinical study using CBD oil. So for the moment, the purported health benefit of CBD oils remain anecdotal, speculative, and scientifically unproven. Now, for therapeutic efficacy, doses matters. And the daily doses of epidiolex is approximately 1800 milligram per day. And that is the equivalent of 120 sub gels containing CBD oil, or the entire 30 milliliter bottle of CBD oils. 
So the daily consumption of a few soft gels or a few drops of CBD oils would yield a doses far lower than epidural wax. And uh, that is something to keep in mind if you consider using CBD soft gel or CBD oil for medical purposes. Now, um, let me share with you our research on natural products at Grossman. So as you recall, my lab developed technology for the study of metabolic disorder. And recently we were granted a US patent on a proteomics technology for fatty liver diagnostics. We use this patented technology to develop a physiological lie detector test for the quality control of natural products. So how does this physiological lie detector test work? So the physiological lie detector tests use the physiological responses as determinant of authenticity and potency of natural products. In this test, we use tissue cultures of human cell lines. We expose them to natural products. Then we measure the effects of natural products on the signal transduction pathway. The signal transduction pathway are essentially cascades of signaling proteins that relay extracellular stimulation to elicit physiological responses. For example, simulation of MAP kinase signaling pathway would promote cells growth and stimulation of PI3K, AKT, and TOR signaling pathway would promote cells metabolism and the stimulation of the JAK-STAT signaling pathway would promote cell immune response. But using our patented proteomic technology, we measure the effects of natural products on the activity of the signal transduction pathway. And the physiological responses would then allow us to evaluate the authenticity and potency of natural products. For example, if a natural product is known to boost metabolism, but found to downregulate the metabolic signaling pathway, then we have to question its authenticity. We also use the strength of the physiological responses to uh, measure the potency of natural products. And I will provide several examples of how the physiological lie detector test was used to authenticate essential oils and determine the potency of CBD oils. So in this example, we authenticate green mandarin essential oils on, by uh, evaluating their effects on the jak stat signaling pathway, which regulate immune response. The green mandarin essential oil comprise many terpenes with D-limonene being the most abundant terpenes. So we bought uh, two green mandarin essential oil, CND and CNC1, and also a D-limonene isolate. And we expose human liver cells with the oil and the D-limonene isolate. So as you can see, treatment of liver cell with CMD oil led to a gain in the STAT3 peak compared to the untreated control, which indicate an upregulation of the JAK STAT signaling pathway. On the other hand, treatment of liver cells with CNC oil or the D-limonene isolate led to a loss in STAT3P compared to the untreated control, which indicate a downregulation of the JAK stat signaling pathway. Now, green mandarin essential oil is known to boost immunity. So we suspect that uh, CND oils were authentic and CNC1 oils were adulterated. And the chemical assessment confirmed a suspicion. When we examine the composition of CMD, which is represented by the inner circle, we found that CMD has about 70% of D-limonene in blue, 20% of gamma terpenes, and 10% of the remaining terpenes, which include alpha-pinene, beta-pinene, myrcene, and cyanine. So the chemical profile of CND oils were consistent with the chemical profile of known green mandarin essential oils. In contrast, the chemical profile of CNC1 
reveal more than 90% of D-limonene and less than 10% of the remaining terpenes. So both of the biochemical assessment and the chemical assessment concur that CNC1 green mandarin essential oils was adulterated. It, it was clear that uh, D-limonene isolate was added to CNC1 oil. In the uh, next experiment, we uh, use the physiological lie detector test to authenticate Melissa essential oils. We focus on the effects of Melissa essential oils on the PI3K, AKT, and mTOR signaling pathway, which regulate metabolism. So we evaluated four Melissa essential oils, and we found that treatment of liver cells with MD1, MD2, and MC3B led to an increase in peak intensity of the protein 4-EBP1, which suggests that treatment of these oil led to an upregulation of the metabolic signaling pathway. In contrast, treatment of liver cells with MC3A, Melissa essential oil, led to a loss of 4-EPP1 uh, peak compared to the untreated control, which indicate a downregulation of the metabolic signaling pathway. Now, Melissa essential oil is known to boost metabolism, so we suspected that MC3A oils were adulterated. And the chemical assessment of the Melissa essential oil confirmed our suspicion. When we examined the chemical composition of MC3A, which is represented by the, uh, sec the circle, by the, the ring, the, the second ring from outside in, or the third ring from inside out, we found that it does not have the red band representing German cream B. In contrast, the other Melissa essential oil all have the red band representing German cream D. So both the biochemical and the chemical assessment concur that MC3A Melissa essential oils were adulterated. A further experiment not shown in this slide revealed that MC3A was actually a blend between Melissa essential oil and uh, lemongrass essential oil. Now, uh, Melissa essential oil is, is about 30 times more expensive than lemongrass essential oils. So MC3A was a clear example of economically motivated adulteration. But at this point, you probably asking the question that if we were able to authenticate essential oils using just the chemical assessment, then why do we need the biochemical assessment? Why do we need the physiological lie detector test? So the next experiment will show you why the biochemical assessment or the physiological lie detector test was necessary. So in this experiment, we examined the effects of 5 copaiba essential oils on the JAK-STAT signaling pathway. The chemical fingerprints of all five oils were nearly identical with some natural variation in terpene comp compositions. So based on the chemical assessment, all five copaiba oils were equally good. Interestingly, we found that uh, three copaiba essential oils CD1, CD2, and CD3 upregulated the jack stat signaling pathway. On the other hand, CC3A and CC3B sample downregulated the jack stat signaling pathway. Cobra E by essential oils is known to boost immunity. So we suspected that CC3A and CC3B were adulterated. And further experiment, uh, not shown here in this slide, revealed that indeed CC3A and CC3B oils were oxidized due to improper storage condition. So in, the, in this example, we show that the physiological lie detector test could differentiate 
chemically identical cobae by essential oil. And now let's uh, talk about our research on CBD oil. So when we started on CBD oil research, we were challenged by the question of how to choose the right CBD oil. Uh, there were so many offering in the marketplace and all producer claim that their CBD oils are the best. So first we wanted to know if we could use chemistry to help us select the most potent CBD oil. And we bought six CBD oil, V1 through V6, from six major producer. We uh, withheld the name of the producer due to legal concerns. We sent these six CBD oils to three independent testing labs for chemical assessment. We found that all six CBD oils were full spectrum CBD oil, had correct label of CBD content, and had the TSC content below the legal limit. So the chemistry told us that all six oils were very good. But it's important to point out that the chemistry of these six CBD oils did not allow us to differentiate them. And we were still unable to select the most potent CBD oil out of these six samples. We then uh, ran these CBD oil through a physiological lie detector test. Uh, specifically, we examined their effects on the metabolic signaling pathway in human neurons. We uh, found that CBD oil V1 strongly suppressed the activity of this metabolic signaling pathway. By comparison, the other CBD oils, V2 through V6, has variable and uh, weak suppressive effects on the metabolic signaling pathway. So our data clearly show that CBD oil V1 was the most potent CBD oil among these six CBD oils. So in this example, the physiological lie detector test allow us to select the most potent CBD oil. We then continue our assessment of the bioactivity of CBD oil V1. We found that CBD oil V1 downregulated the metabolic signaling pathway in a dose and time dependent fashions. CBD oils has a uh, half maximal effective concentration of around 40 microgram per mil and a very slow acting kinetic with a half maximal effective time of approximately four hours. We then systematically measure the effects of CBD oil V1 on nine neuronal signaling pathway that regulate neuronal metabolism, proliferation, differentiation, immunity, memory, neuronal plasticity, and cell death. Specifically, we measure a uh, diagnostic panel of 26 proteins, which serves as biomarkers for uh, the uh, nine signaling trans signal transduction pathway. And we found the CBD oils down-regulated seven out of nine signaling pathway and have no effect on the MAP kinase signaling pathway that regulate proliferation or the wind beta catenin signaling pathway that regulate neuronal plasticity. So in summary of the proteomic study, we found that through multiple uh, experiment and multiple publication, we have validated the physiological lie detector test for the quality control of natural products. We found that chemistry is an insufficient potency determinant of natural product, and that the physiological lie detector test or biochemistry complements chemistry and enhances the potency assessment of natural products. We found that CBD oils downregulate neuronal signaling pathway with a very slow acting kinetics. And the slow acting kinetics is indicative of an indirect interaction of CBD with neural receptors. And the downregulation of multiple neuronal signaling pathway supports the anxiolytic effects of CBD oil. 
So here are the criteria that I would use to select the best CBD oil. First, I would select full spectrum CBD oil to maximize the entourage effects. Second, I would select the CBD oil that are extracted using the supercritical CO2 extraction method because this extraction method allows for complete extractions of terpenes and cannabinoids from the cannabis plants. Third, I would uh, choose the CBD oil that was diluted in organic hemp seed oil because both hemp seed oil and CBD oil came from the cannabis plants. I would not accept the addition of CBD isolate or any kind of flavoring additive, because as we discussed, these process encourage adulteration of CBD oil, right? And I would choose the CBD oils that are accompanied with the certificates of analysis, where the producer show you that they have actually done the chemical assessment to evaluate the content of cannabinoids and terpenes, and also the options of pesticide and heavy metal. And uh, most importantly, I would not use any CBD oil that did not pass the physiological lie detector test. However, because uh, we invented this physiological lie detector test, so it's currently not available anywhere else, but it is our hope that in the near future, we can integrate the physiological lie detector test into the standard testing protocol for CBD oil. Now, my uh, preferred route of administration of CBD oils is topical applications. So we talk about the risk of inhalation of CBD oil and lung injury, and the risk of ingestion of CBD oil and liver injury and GI distress. For topical application, the benefit of CBD oil uh, localized to the targeted tissues and the risk of systemic side effects on vital organs are minimized. In fact, my lab has been formulating pain creams containing essential oil and CBD oil for back pain and joint pain. These photos are those of the actual setup in my lab to extract essential oil using steam distillation and the production of pain cream using a high sear mixer. In conclusion, my lab at Roseman has been studying phytonutrients a therapeutic agent for metabolic disorder. We have a patented proteomic technology to study the bioactivity of phytonutrients and to develop combination that synergize their bioactivity. We have developed a range of products that can deliver these combination into the human body. And we have been systematically evaluating the therapeutic potential of these combination in tissue culture and also in animal models of uh, metabolic disorder. Most excitedly, we uh, have several combinations that are ready for clinical trials. Uh, we are following patent application to protect our inventions. And we are also seeking industrial partner to uh, support the clinical trials. My lab has a website at this link where you can learn more about our research and publications. And I will stop here to, and take any question that you might have. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Lee. And that was fantastic. Um, to our attendees, if you have any questions, please do go ahead and submit them now using the Q&A icon on the lower right of your screen. And while we're waiting, I want to encourage everyone again to email me to share what other topics you'd like covered in these presentations. Go ahead and send your ideas to alumni at rosemond.edu. We'll see, at this point, we don't have any questions. I saw a hand raise. Oh, let's see. Oh, could you submit your question to the Q&A? There we go. Great, so here's a question. What do your creams primarily treat? Pain? Uh, yes, so right now the, uh, the cream incorporate uh, essential oils that are known to 
to have analgesic effects and also uh, to reduce inflammation. So we integrating these essential oils and CBD oils to help with the, uh, the pain. Wonderful. Does anyone else have any questions? Great, well, thank you again, Dr. Lee. We're grateful to you for sharing your expertise and your time. Uh, and thank you to everyone who participated. Uh, once again, all attendees will receive a PDF of Dr. Lee's slides and the YouTube link in the coming days. And we hope right you- Right now, I saw several more hand, raise oh. hands. Great, there is another question. Do you have plans for metabolically helping with weight? That's a very good question. And that's uh, what we have been um, doing for the last several years. Uh, in fact, currently we have several formulation that are helping with weight management. And we have another formulation that are uh, helping with the, the management of diabetes to control the blood glucose uh, level. And excitedly, these formulation have been uh, tested and proven to work in tissue cultures and also in animal models of metabolic disorder. And uh, these formulations are ready for clinical trials. Right now we're in the process of filing patent application to protect our inventions. And as soon as we are able to do that, then we can get an IRB and start enrolling volunteer in the, into the clinical trials uh, on these uh, natural products. Wonderful. And a follow-up question to that is, uh, how long are you from FDA approval? Uh, that is a very good uh, question. Uh, the FDA uh, regulates nutraceuticals or natural product at foods. So uh, from the um, Congressional Act of 1994, the burden is on the FDA to prove that the natural product is unsafe. Otherwise, then you treat it as food and you can proceed with the clinical trials uh, without the need to, to ask for permission from the FDA. In fact, there have been many, many clinical trials going around the world uh, using nutraceutical, phytonutrients, or uh, natural products on, on humans. Uh, so FDA approval is not uh, required for uh, natural products. Great, thank you. And another question, how can you be sure that your CBD product does not flag on a drug test? That is a very good question because that is the confusion in the regulation of CBD product currently. Um, the drug tests, whether that is for athletic performance or employment tests, detect for the presence of TSC, which is a psychoactive compound. It does not matter if you have a high concentration of TSC or low concentration of TSC. As long as it detects TSC, that's it, you, you got flat. Um, so the consumer of CBD products are still facing with this legal hurdle and you're still facing the risk of uh, being test positive for TSC if you are consuming uh, CBD product, which is legal. So that is a challenge for the FDA to sort out. And as, as I stated earlier, several owner of legal CBD dispensary, right. legal and licensed CBD dispensary was arrested by TA agent for transporting CD, CBD product for their stores. Uh, because the TA agent couldn't differentiate between hemp and marijuana based on the physical appearances. And the TSC, uh, the, the drug test come back TSC positive. But that's why this uh, legal owner of CBD dispensary was incarcerated by the DEA. So that is a great area that uh, the FDA and law enforcement have to uh, you know, work it out. Wonderful, thank you. Are there any other questions? Go ahead and type it in the Q&A box.
All right. Okay. Well, thank you again, Dr. Lee. That was wonderful, very informative. We appreciate your sharing your expertise. And uh, again, everyone who has uh, registered will receive a PDF of Dr. Lee's slides and we'll send the YouTube link in the coming days as well. And we hope you'll join us for future Roadrunner Resource Series presentations. Thank you so much to everyone, to Dr. Lee, and have a wonderful evening. Good evening, everyone. Good night. Good night.